We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope everybody's doing good today. Make sure you guys have your teacups ready. Get ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get Hell ready. Yeah. Because this tea is what? Piping hot. So today, Ray Carruth was trending all over Twitter. And at first, I was like, what the hell? Why is Ray Carruth trending? I thought maybe he was getting out today. You know, something happened to him in prison. But basically, what happened is that Ray Carruth decided to write a 15-page letter to Sandra Adams. Sandra Adams is Sharika Adams' mother. Sharika Adams is a young girl that Ray Carruth killed almost 18 years ago. Basically, from what the media was reporting back then, and I remember this was like a huge case. It happened back in 1999. I remember when I moved down to Charlotte in like the early 2000s, um, he was going on trial. So that was like a big case down there in Charlotte. He was a Carolina Panther and basically had hired some hitmen to kill Sharika. Sharika thought they were, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, fiance. She wanted the relationship to be a lot more. And when she found out she was pregnant, he was really upset. He wanted her to have an abortion. She refused to. And supposedly he didn't want to pay child support. So he hired some hitmen to kill her. And so Sharika saw the guys. She told the police before she died that Ray Carruth was the one behind this. And she died after a few weeks in the hospital. But the sad part is that the baby that she was pregnant with, he was born premature. So he was born with all types of medical issues. So it's been the grandmother Sandra Adams that's been raising this young boy so Ray Carew says basically he's matured he's grown he's reached out to her and Sandra Adams honestly she's a good woman because she has forgiven Ray Carew and she has even allowed Chancellor to go to the prison and see him twice so I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip it's about seven minutes long but I think it's important that y'all see the whole you know news clips so you guys can kind of get an idea of what's going on and the backstory as well go ahead and check this out I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary it's been two decades since a talented young wide receiver played here for the Carolina Panthers. And in almost the same amount of time, he sat quietly behind bars, convicted in the murder of a beautiful young Sharika Adams. But today, Ray Carruth is finally breaking his silence. It came in the form of a neatly written letter, more than 3,000 words strung together on 15 pages. Together, they provide a voice for a man who's chosen not to have one for nearly two decades. The world watched as the star Carolina Panthers wide receiver morphed from a person people wanted to be. Two more days, I think I'll be fine. Into one they hated. Federal agents arrested a somber Ray Carruth in western Tennessee after what could be the greatest fumble of his career. The ultimate fall from grace landed the talented athlete a sentence of 18 to 24 years behind bars for conspiring to kill Sharika Adams, the mother of Carruth's unborn child. Was shot four times in an allegedly pathetic scheme. Luckily, none of the bullets hit the baby. Great! Yeah. That baby is now a young man, and that young man, Chancellor Lee Adams, who has bright eyes and an infectious smile, is why Carruth says he's finally speaking out. Carruth's starting words thank Adams for the unconditional care, compassion, love, and support she's shown Chancellor from the beginning. The letter is to Miss Adams. Why not yes. just send it to her? Well, because in the past, I've written Miss Adams. Um, and most everything that I've said in the letter, I've actually said to her, um, starting with the apology. After his shift as a barber at the Sampson Correctional Institution in Eastern North Carolina, Ray Carruth called me to talk about why he's sharing his truth now. I feel responsible for everything that happened, and I just want her to know that truly I am sorry for everything. What exactly are you apologizing for? I'm apologizing for the loss of her daughter. I'm apologizing for the impairment of my son. Carruth wouldn't speak about the specifics of that night in 1999 when Sharika was shot four times by someone Carruth hired. But he does take responsibility for the actions that left his son without a mother and a father. Of course, if I could change anything, I'd change the whole situation. His mother would still be here and I wouldn't be where I'm at. So. That's what I would want to change. I would want to change for the incident to never have happened at all. Carew's letter offers not only an apology, but also an opportunity to push back on what he says are inaccurate narratives and headlines that have populated his story over the years. He knows his words may bring more anger and hate against him and writes, I've long accepted my lot as a social pariah, but is setting the record straight to gain much needed peace of mind.
From the moment the story broke, we heard Sharika referred to as Karuth's girlfriend. In fact, this neighbor told WBTV at the time he heard her use that word to police. She first said it was her husband, then she said it was her boyfriend that had shot her. But Karuth says the two were practically strangers. According to him, they hooked up multiple times but were never in a relationship. He writes, Never was Sharika under the illusion, or delusion, that I was ever going to propose marriage to her. Lust was the tie that bound us, not like or love, and neither one of us was ever guilty of believing anything contrary to this. Karuth admits he broached the subject of abortion when Sharika told him she might be pregnant, but he says he never brought it up again when she expressed her desire to keep the child that fought an uphill battle from the beginning. Because of the shooting orchestrated by his own father, Chancellor was born premature with a cerebral palsy diagnosis. Karuth has met his son twice in the early years of the boy's life, but even from prison, he's closely followed news stories documenting Chancellor's extraordinary progress. What do you see when you see a picture or a video of Chancellor? I see a kid that is filled with joy and happiness, and that makes me feel good. I see myself in him, I see his mother, um, I just see a kid that's not aware of the difficulties that he's had. He, I can tell he's being loved, I can tell he's being well taken care of, um, I don't know, I just see a spirit that's capable of conquering any difficulties that come his way, and that makes me happy. Recently, Adams has spoken publicly about her willingness to let Chancellor get to know his father, especially as his October release date approaches. Caruth says he wants nothing more, and has even sent visitation forms to Adams, but never received a response. I feel like I owe Chancellor, you know, I let him down as he came into this world, and the only way that I can make that right, the only way that I can reconcile my relationship with my son is to be there for him and to be a father and a dad to him going forward. But Karuth's fatherly desires don't just stop at a relationship. He wants to eventually care for his son. I should be raising my son. His mother should be raising her son. Miss Adams should not be doing this. And I want that responsibility back. In the letter, Caruth writes, I mean, come on, Miss Adams. The reality is you aren't going to be around forever. At some point, someone else will have to be responsible for Chancellor's care. And I feel like he might not ever have his mother in his life, but he could still have me, and I could still make a difference. Um, and I just don't think that that's anybody else's responsibility when I'm still here. But why would the man who's responsible for so much heartache deserve redemption? Caruth says he's found something he never had before. Are you the same person that you were 20 years ago? Absolutely not. I think back then I was very immature, very self-centered. When I first got incarcerated, I had to sit down and ask myself, like, how did this happen? How are you here? And the number one answer that I had was I didn't have a relationship with God. And I know some people might smirk or laugh about that, but I, I know now that I have a very real relationship with God, and that's changed the way that I see and view a lot of things. 17 years in prison has given him a lot of time to think. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that the choices that we make in life don't just affect us. They affect your loved ones, your family, the people around you. Um, and that's something I didn't realize before. In eight months, Caruth will be a free man. Adams has said she'll be at the gates with Chancellor waiting for him, but Caruth wants to start building that relationship now. Ever the athlete, he ends the letter writing, ball is in your court. You and Chancellor take care and be blessed. Respectfully, Ray Caruth. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. So, like I said, the story is viral. Everybody's talking about it on social media. A lot of people are pissed, of course. A lot of people are like, you know what? It's crazy that he was sentenced to, like, 30 years and he's getting out only after 18 years. While I do think that maybe Ray Carruth may have matured in prison, I'm sure he's sorry for what he did because he's been in prison for so long. I do not feel comfortable with him getting custody of that boy. For him to tell her mother, you're not going to be around forever, you're getting older. I mean, yes, common sense tells you she's not going to be around forever, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to raise a child that you literally helped to kill the mother and put him in the predicament that he was in. Before she got shot, 
not, this baby was healthy. He had no issues, no nothing. It was because of the trauma that his mother went through is what caused his trauma and his disabilities. So I personally don't feel comfortable with Ray Caruth getting custody of this young boy. And that's not even my dang on child. You know, I'm not related to this kid. And I don't feel comfortable with it. I definitely believe that the little boy is where he needs to be with his grandmother and with his grandmother's family. So Sandra has spoken out today to the Charlotte Observer. And this is what she told them today. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. So Sandra says, I've forgiven Ray already, but to have any type of relationship with him, there does have to be some repentance. And I think this opens the door, but I can say definitely he's not ever going to have custody of Chancellor. Chancellor will be raised either by me or after I'm gone by someone who loves him, who knows him. He will never be raised by a stranger, someone that doesn't know him and who tried to kill him. So that is what Sandra Adams, Sharika Adams' mother, had to say about the situation. So she's not going to allow Ray Karouf to get custody of this young boy, which I don't feel like he needs to. I could see if he was just like a normal, healthy kid, but the fact that he has so many medical issues and he has a disability and everything else, he needs to be around somebody who understands his disability, who can give him proper care, who can give him proper love. And I would not feel safe, you know, having a child be in the custody of somebody who killed their mother. That's not okay. So I'm glad that she's standing behind that and that she's not going to allow Ray Caruth to have custody of that child. Now, does that mean that Ray Caruth should never be allowed to see that child? No, that's not my place. If Sandra has forgiven him and Sandra wants to allow Ray to be in that child's life, that's their business. But I just don't think that he should have custody of the child. And another thing about this story that also bothers me is just how inconsistent the justice system is. Like you literally have people in prison right now for drug related offenses. They've never killed anybody. They were caught with a bunch of weed or a bunch of, you know, drugs or whatever. And they're literally doing, you know, 20, 30 years in prison, no chance of parole. Ray Caruth killed somebody and he's out in less than 18 years. So the whole situation to me is just crazy. Hopefully once he does come out from serving his time, hopefully he then can be a productive member of society and maybe, you know, go out and do speaking engagements and talk to these young people about making better choices sexually and about making better choices in life in general. So that way they don't end up in the same situation that he found himself in. So anyways, y'all, let me know what you guys think about this entire situation concerning Ray Caruth. Do you think that there should ever be a reason that he gets custody of Chancellor? Or do you agree with the grandmother that he should never get custody of Chancellor? And that even when she's gone, she will leave Chancellor with somebody that she knows and Chancellor knows as well? And then how do you feel about Ray Caruth getting out after only serving 18 years for the murder of Sharika Adams? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. All right, deuces. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. And make sure you click that bell so you can be down with the notification squad honey hey you guys it's your girl t make sure to subscribe like and share my videos you can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise also don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos talk to y'all later deuces